Greetings and welcome to Faith Moments with Dina Marie, a weekly podcast where I proclaim and ponder our Sunday Mass readings. And we are closing up the Christmas season, the 12 days of Christmas, actually from Christmas Day to the traditional date for the Epiphany, which is the 6th of January. Those are those beautiful 12 days of Christmas. And we celebrate today on Sunday the Feast of of the epiphany. And so we are going to hear the account of what we traditionally tie to the epiphany, which is the calling of the wise men. We, we hear in uh, beautiful songs, you know, th we three kings. Uh, we don't know if there were really three kings or if there were more than that. There were certainly three gifts. But we'll hear more about this beautiful close of the Christmas season. For those who would like to hold on to the Christmas spirit in your decorations and in your countenance, uh, our Christmas tree is still up. And really, there are 40 days of Christmas if you want to go until the Feast of the Presentation of the Lord on February 2nd. So you have my permission to keep those Christmas lights on, to light that Christmas tree, to light that Christmas candle, but most importantly, to ignite your personal relationship, your personal encounter with Jesus Christ, the King. So let's get into these readings. I want to welcome those of you who have joined me by podcast on the Hail Mary Media app or any of your podcast platforms. You can get this podcast on a regular basis. I launch these every week, and it's a beautiful opportunity for us to stay in touch with Faith Moments with Dina Marie. So go to your favorite podcast platform, type in Faith Moments with Dina Marie, and you can have these on a regular basis. This and many other podcasts are available at the Hail Mary. Mary Media app. It's absolutely free. It's a free download and beautiful resources that are produced out of the Archdiocese of Portland in Oregon. With that, I want to begin. And the theme, there's a couple of things that are coming to my mind. The universal gift. If you donate blood, you've heard of the universal donor. Well, we have the universal gift that we will be reflecting on today. And there's a sense of, for me, a renewal a refreshment, a recall, or a calling back into really the life of Christ. And so let's listen to these readings, the collect for today's mass for our Sunday readings for the Epiphany of the Lord year A. Again, welcome to 2023 is this. Let us pray. O oh God, who on this day revealed your only begotten son to the nations, by the guidance of a star. Grant in your mercy that we, who know you already by faith, may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Okay, I want to go back into that collect, because as we hear the, the readings, and this is something I really want to invite you, I invite me to do the same thing, because I know at the beginning of Mass, uh, maybe you sung that first song, and everybody's standing, and, and still maybe people are coming into the church, there's a lot of opportunity for distraction, and then Father says, let us pray, and he prays this prayer, the opening collect, but so much of the collect in so many of our daily readings, daily masses, and then the Sunday readings, you're going to you're going to find a nugget of, of truth and enlightenment that will, will be found in the readings that we'll hear. And I, I, I know that we're going to hear something special from the scripture from Isaiah today, and then we're going to hear from the gospel, and we're going to hear the account of the Magi. So here again, O oh God, who on this day, you know, this is a collect for this day, the Feast of the Epiphany, on this day, revealed your only begotten son. You know, here's a teaching of the faith. Here's our creed and what we believe, that Jesus is God's only begotten son, not created at a certain moment in time. Jesus has always been begotten son to the nations. So Jesus is a son to the nations, to all people. You know, this is another truth that's revealed right here in the collect. 
And here, the, the day that we're recalling on this day, this truth was revealed by the guidance of a star, by the guidance of a star. I don't know if any of you are stargazers and you have the opportunity to just look out maybe in your own patio, maybe those of you who go camping or love to go out on a lake, on the mountains, you know, we who live in the Pacific Northwest, we have so many beautiful places to go and, and, and glance at the stars. How was that? The guidance of the star. There's so many different, um, accounts and, and scientists and astronomers that have looked at the stars, but just think about the guidance of a star that led the seekers to Jesus. And here's what I love, this line, that we who know you already by faith, so we're rep- proclaiming that we have a faith already in God, but we're asking that we be brought to behold the beauty, listen to this, of your sublime glory, that we would be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory. Have you ever thought about that? I mean, the collect goes by so fast. And sometimes I might hear a priest pray this prayer pretty quickly. Oh, and I just, I, I love when many times the priest may chant this prayer, and it just gives it this solemnness. And we're on a solemnity of the epiphany. And so again, could we behold the beauty of God's sublime glory? That in itself, if we didn't even get to the readings, if all of a sudden you've got a toddler, you've got kids, and they're going to distract you the whole rest of the mass, but you get this collect prayer. Ponder it in your hearts like Mary ponders all things. You know, Mary is such the greatest example of how we hold things in our heart and meditate. And that's why as I begin these programs, these faith moments programs, I talk about proclaiming because we're not reading the the scriptures. I read a book. I read a novel. I read an inspirational story, but I proclaim sacred scripture. Sacred scripture is different than any other word that we might read in our lives. And I want to make for myself a a differentiation between when I read in this book and I read any other book, even if it's a book, a book by Pope Benedict the 16th, may he rest in peace of happy memory that the sacred scriptures God's holy word is something to be um, reflected upon in a very special and unique way. So we proclaim and we ponder these mass readings for Sunday and for every day. Okay, let's get into the first reading, uh, the book of Isaiah. And this is at the end of the book of Isaiah, chapter 60. And again, Isaiah, if you just want to meditate and put yourself in the scene, Isaiah is a, certainly a book to do that. You could just close your eyes and visualize what's going on, what's happening here. What do these things bring to mind as I encounter the Lord, as I encounter his message, his promise, his desire to be with me? The reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 60, verses 1 through 6, our first reading. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem, your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick clouds cover the peoples. But upon you, the Lord shines, and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light, and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow. For the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you. 
dromedaries from Midian and Ephah, and all from Sheba shall come, bearing gold and frankincense, and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Our responsorial psalm, Psalm 72, Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. O God, with your judgment endow the king, and with your justice the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice, and your afflicted ones with judgment. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Justice shall flower in his days, and profound peace till the moon be no more. May he rule from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. The kings of Tarshish and the isles shall offer gifts. The kings of Araba and Seba shall bring tribute. All kings shall pay him homage. All nations shall serve him. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. For he shall rescue the poor when he cries out, and the afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor, the lives of the poor he shall save. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Our second reading comes from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians chapter 3. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely, that the, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. It was not made known to people in other generations, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. Alleluia, alleluia. Our gospel reading is from the gospel of Matthew chapter 2. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising, and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea. For thus it has been written through the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to, to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star and on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A couple of things that I want to reflect on with you today, and 
this is another reading and I want to re remind you as I really am reminding myself of a beautiful way to contemplate the mysteries of the rosary. And I was driving the other day and I had a long drive. And one of my favorite ways to drive is just to be able to pray that rosary. If you just prayed the rosary, one mystery, let's say you're doing the joyful mysteries of the rosary and just praying the prayers, the Our Father, the Hail Mary, the Creed, it takes about 20 minutes. But if you take time before that mystery of the rosary, the annunciation, the visitation, the nativity of the Lord, the presentation and the finding of Jesus at the temple, if you just take time to just think about what's happening here, you know, let's go back in the readings with, with the joyful mysteries and really we've been praying the joyful mysteries most of the time of Christmas, uh, just to really get settled into this beautiful time of Christ's life. You know, the time of the Annunciation at the moment where our uh, where Mary encounters the angel to her time of visiting Elizabeth and their time together. And then of course the nativity, but around the nativity, we have this event. We have the Magi, we have the shepherds, you know, we have so many different pieces of the puzzle of the life of Christ. So it's not just looking at that nativity and just looking at one moment. There's so much that led to the nativity. There's so many things during those first few days of the birth of Christ and who encounters Christ and what's happening with Mary and Joseph. And I was thinking about these wise men and we read in this scripture of Matthew, you know, they see a star and they're following the star, but they also don't quite know where to go. And so where do they go? They go to Jerusalem and, and some of the different readings, some of the different uh, reflections that I've heard, you know, they don't see the star in Jerusalem. They go to where they can get information. They go to the current King of Jerusalem to find out more. They're on a journey. They're on this mission. And so they have some light that's guiding them, but they're actually in a cloud of darkness when they come to Jerusalem because there's a presence of Herod who is not of God, who's not following God. In fact, he's, he's trying to persecute those in many ways who follow the true Lord and God because he wants to be God. And, and ruler of the people. And then the Magi go off and continue their journey. And then they can, then they see the star again. And have you ever been on a journey? Well, we're all on a journey. Our life is a journey. Your vocation, if you're married, if you're a priest, if you're a deacon, if you're a religious, if you're discerning, um, Lord, where are you calling me? We're on a journey. Sometimes we see light. Sometimes we see that star. And sometimes it's clouded. Sometimes it's being darkened and we can't see that light or direction. But yet we might encounter a good counsel. We might encounter a good and holy priest, maybe in time of confession or in spiritual direction, maybe in just reading sacred scripture and getting some enlightenment. And when we encounter the word of God, we encounter that guidance. Oh, let's go back on this path, the path to Christ. There's a really great reading in uh, this book, The Conversation with God. This is several volumes, depending on the time of, of year that we're in. This is going to follow the Christmas time and the Advent season. And on the readings for the, the Epiphany, both on the 5th and the 6th of January, just there's some great quotes about the faith of the kings. And I wanted to bring these out. And if you ever get a hold of this book, it, it's, it's well worth your time in reading. Again, the conversation with God. This particular first reflection is from St. John Chrysostom in one of his homilies. And it's focusing on these wise men and again, their encounter with the star. And St. John Chrysostom said, God called, let, let me do this little introduction. The occupation of these wise men, that of studying the stars, we get a sense that they're very wise. They study, they have knowledge. 
was the circumstance used by God. So God used their wisdom to make them see his will. God called them by what was most familiar to them and showed them a great marvelous star. So God used that which was familiar and part of the strengths or gifts of these wise men to call them to himself. Beautiful. He does the same thing with each of us. So that it would attract their attention by its very greatness and beauty. Beautiful thought by St. John Chrysostom that God used that which was true in beauty God is truth and beauty to call these wise men to himself. The journey, thinking of this journey of the wise men, must have been very long and difficult, but they persevered on the way. These men determined, and with none of what we might call worldly respect, teach us what we have to do to reach Jesus. We've got to persist on the long and difficult journey, just as these wise men did. Leave aside everything that can lure us from the way or hold us up on our journey. Do we have distractions along the way? Do we have roadblocks? Do we have the evil one trying to distract us from keeping our focus on God every day? Sometimes we can be held up in what refers to in what refers to following Jesus closely, lovingly, by the fear of what people will say. You know, if I live a certain lifestyle, if I live a certain way, holy and true and following Jesus Christ, what will people say? Maybe people will, will, they'll not want me to be around. They'll be offended. They'll be offended by my love of Christ. You see that these men who fill our feast with joy give us a lesson in bravery. It is a lesson not to pay attention to human respect, which paralyzes many who could already be close to Christ living with him. We too have seen the star in the depth of our heart, inviting us to be detached from the things that tie us down and to overcome any human respect which prevents us from reaching Jesus. The wise men give us an opportunity to reflect what's holding me back from truly encountering Jesus. Is there some pride that's holding me back? Here's another beautiful reflection. Of all those who contemplated the star, only these wise men of the East discovered its deep meaning. Only they understood what for others was only an unusual spectacle in the sky. It is possible that others too received that same special grace from God, but did not correspond to it. What a great tragedy for them. And this quote is from the divine auspice of the Vespers of Epiphany. With the church, let us ask God our Father, O God, who enlightened the wise men from the East and sent them on their way to adore your son, enlighten our faith and accept the offering of our prayers. There's so much here. I want to read one more um, reflection. The wise men must have traveled along bad roads and slept in uncomfortable places. Their journey was dangerous and treacherous and long, and they could have stopped and went back. But the star was showing them the way and taught them the meaning of their lives. The star made their journey joyful and reminded them all the time that it was worth undergoing any discomfort or danger as long as they came to see Jesus. As long as they come to see Jesus, keep following that star. Don't get distracted. Don't get discouraged. Don't worry about the the rigorous of life. Don't worry about the rocky road. Endure it anyway. Endure it anyway. Be uncomfortable. Be be, uh, interrupted. Be in an uncomfortable place. 
but keep focused on the star. Keep focused on the message of Jesus Christ. All right, my final my final thought in this book. It's so beautiful. I just love this. The whole of our life is a road toward Jesus. This is the key. The whole of our life is a road toward Jesus. It is a road we have to travel by the light of faith. That's the star. Faith. Our star is the faith. Faith will lead us whenever necessary, to ask and let ourselves to be guided, to be docile. But we Christians have no need to go to Herod or to the wise men of the world. Christ has given us his church, sureness and doctrine, and a flow of grace in the sacraments. We have it. He has arranged things so that there will always be people to guide us and lead us, to remind us constantly of our way. Allow me to give you a piece of advice. If you ever lose the way, and this is what I want to close with, if you ever lose the way, always turn to the good shepherd. Go to the priest who looks after you, who knows how to demand of you a strong faith, refinement of soul, and true Christian fortitude. Go to the priest. Go to the priests of our saints, St. John Vianney. Go to the priests. Go to your parish priest. Go to confession. Go to the one who is going to challenge you to hold on to Jesus Christ. Go to our priests. Your church, the church, allows us the freedom to confess to any priest provided he has the proper faculties. But a conscientious Christian will go with complete freedom to the priest he knows to be a good shepherd who can help him to look up again and see once more on high, the Lord's star. The wise men found the star again. It showed them where our Lord was because they followed the advice and indications of those who at the time had been placed by God's providence to show them the way. The church has the way. The sacraments are the way. The holy word of God is the way. Very often our faith is to be applied in docility in this sign of humility, which is letting oneself be helped in spiritual guidance by the person whom we know is the good shepherd for us here and now for the good shepherd. Let's pray for the good shepherds of the church to guide us, to lead us, to follow the star, to cling to our faith and to know Jesus Christ. Peace be with you. Have a blessed epiphany. I'll look forward to talking with you again next week.